Oh boy, this might be your favorite morning meeting ever. We're going to talk about some big, big mistakes that a salesperson made trying to sell me. Welcome to today's morning meeting. I'm Greg Luther, the one guy that meets with you every single day to help you in growing your real estate business. Today, we're going to talk about sales and more importantly, how poorly a lot of salespeople um, present themselves and uh, really they should be considered the president of the sales prevention department because they will kill more sales than they will actually help, even when they have a hot lead on the hook. Let me tell you what I mean, because this is going to be a big lesson for you. You're going to learn a lot from this. And I honestly believe if you implement what I show you from this morning meeting, you're going to make a hell of a lot more money. Uh, so I am in the market right now, kind of in the market right now for buying another horse trailer. Many of you know, I own a whole bunch of race horses, literally three figures worth of race horses, uh, over a hundred of them. And I have uh, horse trailers and horse trucks that run all over the country, moving those horses around and racing in different states and that type of thing. Well, here in Columbus, Ohio, this week, they were finishing up the American Quarter Horse Congress. Now, I don't have anything to do with quarter horses. That's a completely different breed, completely different industry altogether. That's a whole different discipline. Uh, however, a horse is a horse. You need a truck. You need a trailer. You need equipment. You need feed. You need hay. Uh, all of the, the um, things that they all need. Uh, it's kind of not industry specific. It works for anybody that's a horse if you've got four legs and a tail. Well, that's a great place for people from Ohio to go in and get a good deal, a sale special on trailers, on trucks, on any high ticket item. They have RVs there for people that are going around in horse shows trying to win a blue ribbon. They pay $600,000 for an RV. I don't even know if that's what they're called, the tour bus things that crank out and they're like bigger than a semi truck and all of that stuff. $500,000, $600,000. They have dozens and dozens and dozens of them there. Anyway, back to our story about this gentleman uh, who I'm trying to buy a uh, horse trailer from. I get the harebrained idea that I'm going to spoil my horses. So let me tell you guys a little bit about how this works. And I'll show you how it applies to you as a real estate agent as well. So uh, I've been in sales my whole life, right? I've done very, very well. It's afforded me the opportunity to have the type of horses that I have and millions and millions of dollars invested uh, and I've got several horse trailers. Uh, one is a four horse trailer. You can get four on there. One is a five horse. One is a six horse. And that's kind of pretty standard in our industry because you need a CDL license for anything bigger than that. Well, I came up with the idea that some of my good horses, I don't like them going a long way and standing in that stall. They have to like turn them sideways and they have a partition that goes up against their side. I don't like them standing that way and holding their head up for so long. You know, you tie them up to the wall. I don't like doing that. I'd rather have what we call box stalls. So it's literally a comfortable stall. They can lay down and sleep in it. It's it's like the, the ultimate luxury for racehorses. Well, in our industry, we're way too little. No, but like our horses are, the good ones are worth a half a million. So they're not spending that kind of money on these kinds of trailers. Well, you know, Greg Luther. So I want to uh, go out and get one for my horses. I've got a horse racing in a huge race this week. Uh, it's called the Breeders' Crown, biggest that we have. Uh, and uh, I have one racing in the Breeders' Crown uh, this weekend. Her name's Rose Run Yolanda. So I said, you know what? I think it'd be cool for me to just go buy one of these things. Well, I don't know how much they're going to cost. I'm guessing it's surprising to me that horse trailers cost more than an actual car with a motor in it. Right. Like the last trailer that I bought was a small one. It was forty two thousand um, dollars with no motor in it. Like this is something you pull. Uh, but that's America these days. So anyway, I'm going through all of the dealers. They have hundreds and hundreds of cars and trucks and trailers and all of that stuff there. And I'm just looking for box stalls trailer, uh, which means it's going to be a big ass trailer and you can get two horses in it. One in the front stall, one in the back stall. That's it. So a lot of the uh, uh, trailer uh, dealerships, they don't even have those. They're like, no, we don't carry them. It's so rare that anybody would invest that kind of money for one. You're really spoiling your horses if you're doing that. I'm like, okay, thanks. I go to the next one. I go to the next one. Well, I find one, Altmeyer Trailer Sales. Let me cover up his name here. Altmeyer Trailer Sales. Uh, and I never even put two and two together. I'll tell you how this applies to sales in a minute because this dude has made, so far, he has made, 13 sales errors, and I'm writing them all down because I'm going to teach you how you can learn from what salespeople are doing wrong from the sales prevention department. 
13 things so far, and I'm getting ready to go back today to get some more of them. Uh, so I'm going to teach you uh, the lessons of what he has done wrong. So anyway, uh, I go there. I see he has one box trailer. This thing is sweet. It's nicer than anything we have in our industry. Not one horse trainer or horse owner has anything at this high level like this. I mean, this is fancy. This is like the Floyd Mayweather kind of money uh, for a small trailer. Uh, this is something that everybody in our industry would be shocked by, but my horses deserve it. So um, I'm looking at it. I get up inside it. I go around it. I'm taking some pictures of it with my phone. I send it. My brother trains my horses. So I sent him a couple of videos of it. Dude sitting over in the corner. Hey, if you got any questions, let me know. Really? That's really how you're going to sell this? So I start thinking, well, I can see this is a uh, not a good salesperson. Maybe we can have some lessons out of this because sales is sales. Man, if I can teach you how to sell a nose job, if you're a plastic surgeon, it's the same way you would sell a house. It's the same way you would sell a yacht. It's the same way you would sell a horse trailer. He made 13 mistakes. He actually made nine mistakes to begin with. And just as I was pulling out my checkbook because I wanted to buy this thing, uh, I'd already negotiated price and all of that stuff. He made 13, he had nine massive mistakes at that point. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to delay the sale. I'm going to see how he was. I want to think about it. I got to, I got someone else that's involved. I got to have my trainer take a look at it. Can I come back tomorrow? What are your hours tomorrow? I think I'll come back tomorrow. He ended up at 13 mistakes and let me walk out of there. I know his name. He doesn't know mine. 13 mistakes that he's made. I'm going back today. Uh, we're going to record it. I'll take a couple pictures of me uh, doing the deal. I'll be wearing this because I'm literally getting ready to leave right now. Uh, I will probably have my assistant with me. She'll take some uh, pictures of me negotiating this deal. Uh, they wanted $64,000 on the trailer. I already negotiated him down. I said, can you give me that in writing? Ah, come on. Focus for me. 55000 It's not going to focus. Anyway, there it goes. We're at $55,000. Anyway, I'm gonna buy it for. Uh, I would have paid anything for it. I'm literally writing a check. Like I don't I just write a check for what I want. Uh, but he's already at fifty five thousand dollars instead of sixty four thousand. I had no idea they had that much markup in the damn things. Uh, but anyway, I think we'll probably end up with eighteen or nineteen massive sales mistakes that would usually kill the deal. But I'm the hyperactive buyer that's going to buy no matter what. I do it more for egotistical purposes than anything. I want to spoil my horses and be the only one that takes that great care of the horses and all of that stuff. So I have my own reasons for doing it. Most people aren't in that position. Most people are like, oh, my gosh, 64. My horse isn't even worth that much. What kind of financing? Op do you guys have 20-year financing? That's who your normal customer is, just like in real estate. We meet all different walks of life, all different things that are happening wrong. So I want you to think about as a real estate agent, uh, some of the mistakes you might be making that you could change to get a higher conversion rate. I think you'll find that uh, what I'm going to do, by the way, is I'm literally going to buy that trailer today. He doesn't even know it. I'm, we're thinking about it. I'm going to have somebody come look at it, all of that. Uh, I would have bought it yesterday, but I wanted to see how bad he's going to screw up on all of this stuff. Uh, 13 mistakes so far. So uh, if he would have fixed those 13, I'd have bought it over and over and over and over. And let me tell you, he'd have sold a whole bunch of these. I'll look it up. You can look it up yourself. How many people attend the American Quarter Horse Congress every year? My guess would be a million people, a million leads. The dude just doesn't know how to convert. Nothing wrong with it. He's an awesome guy, by the way. Very nice, incredibly knowledgeable about his product. Boy, he'll tell you features all day long. But he forgot that he's not selling it to the trailer. He's selling it to me. Stop talking about how great the trailer is. Maybe you can actually sell to someone when you can understand that emotional sale. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go buy the trailer. We might get a couple pictures that I'll load on uh, tomorrow's morning meeting with you here, or I'll show you uh, while we're on our morning meeting. And uh, I'm going to document every one of the sales mistakes he made, how it applies to you as a real estate agent. So all of the appointments that you go on, all of, look at that, my hat's crooked today. You already noticed that. You just didn't have a way to tell me. Um, but uh, all of the mistakes that he makes, you are probably making on your own too. 
you are probably making those mistakes. And if you can make those minor adjustments, you'll see a massive difference to how your prospects reply to you. So what I've done, I always carry my uh, little notepad with me. This is a back pocket version. I don't get the hard cover. I get what they call a fabric cover because I can sit on it. So this sits in my back pocket uh, and I just take notes all the time. I don't do the cell phone notation thing or whatever. Uh, but anyway, back to that page, 13 mistakes that he made. There'll be more today, I'm sure of it. And as long as he don't screw up the sale, I'll probably buy it today if he doesn't screw up the sale. Uh, but I plan to, I would have bought it yesterday, but I thought this would be a great lesson for all of you. Uh, you will learn a little bit about the sales process and what you could do differently. And I think a lot of it's going to be a big eye opener for you too. Like, holy crap, I never realized that that was the case. Uh, so just kind of looking through these 13 items here. I mean, it's um, it's truly unbelievable how undisciplined how, how there's a lack of sales choreography for salespeople when they're going through their presentation, when they when they meet someone on the lot and they have that weird interact. Hey, how you doing today? You guys looking for a trailer? Like that weird interaction when you first connect with a, a car salesperson, a trailer salesperson, a real estate salesperson, when you walk into an open house, hey, welcome in guys, how you doing? Uh, it just feels kind of weird. Right. The first time you meet a buyer at a property and you get out of the car and they get out of the car. Hey, guys, how you? It's like, oh, here we go. They're not presenting themselves the right way. And you can have a warm reception. You can have a um, a um, friendship connection with them very, very quickly. And more importantly, build that trust, authority and credibility. So what I'm going to do is hopefully if he doesn't mess this deal up. And if I don't have to pay the already ridiculously low fifty five thousand dollars for this thing. Uh, I'm going to uh, buy this vehicle or this vehicle, have a vehicle, it's on wheels, uh, this horse trailer uh, for no, I don't even, I got a hundred and some horses. I'm buying a two horse trailer. I thought it'd be pretty cool. Uh, and I thought you would learn a lot out of this as well. I teach these types of sales trainings to a lot of our agents, including agents that are already doing pretty daggone well. They're top producers, but they know they could be earning more. They know they could be earning more. They're getting ghosted all the time. Buyers are liars. Sellers aren't staying committed. They're saying, I want to wait another two years. All the crap they're hearing, it's because of what's being said. They are from the sales prevention department. So I'm going to go out there. I'm going to try my damnedest to give this guy money. I'm writing a check, cash money, to get this thing done as long as he doesn't screw it up. And like I say, great guy. Don't get me wrong. He's awesome. I mean, he's very, very knowledgeable. Just has not been taught how to sell. So uh, you will learn the lesson from that. It's going to help you to make a lot more money. And every prospect you meet with in public, whether it be real estate or otherwise, you're going to learn how to negotiate better, uh, create rapport a lot better, and provide an ultimate uh, sales presentation where they take action immediately. I think you'll find it very helpful. Make sure you're tuning in if you want to see this. I don't know how many we'll have. There's 13 items so far uh, that he could have done a whole lot better on. I'm guessing there'll be 18 or 19, but I'm literally like, I've got my uh, brother coming today and I said, well, just bring a truck. Like, just bring a truck. We park where he can't see that you brought a truck anyway, but bring a truck. That's how we're hauling this thing out of here. Um, so uh, I think you'll find it to be very helpful. Make sure you are following the channel here and you ring the bell or else you will not get this tomorrow. So you have to be following the channel and ring the bell. You want to learn how sales works? This is how you do it. In the video description below this, you can open up. I think you have to click more. If you open up the video description, you'll see a whole bunch of links on sales training. But let me tell you, what you'll see today, and we'll take some pictures or video or something of me uh, doing this today, uh, and I'll uh, show it to you live on tomorrow's morning meeting. Make sure you're following the channel. Let's see if we can get this thing done. Let's see if my... Horses are going to be ultra excited. They're like, I get to lay down and sleep while we're going somewhere. They're going to be happy about this. Uh, plenty of room to move around. It's like when you get that extra big hotel room and you're like, wow, there's so much room for activities here. Uh, I think that's how my horses are going to feel. They probably don't even know the difference, but I think they will. So I'll see you tomorrow. Make sure you're tuned in here. Share this with a friend. Share this with another realtor, someone that wants to learn how to get better at sales. Here's who, who needs to see this. Anybody who thinks leads are no good. Anybody who thinks these prospects keep ghosting me, nobody's serious. Nobody's real serious about anything. They, they're not serious buyers. They're just, they're looking around. They're looky-loos. If you know agents that are like that, I want you to hit this share button right here. And I want you to share it with them because we're going to make everybody better 
learning from this mistake. You know what the cool part is about this guy here? You know what the cool part about him is? He's going to get the sale anyway. He won't be mad about it. He's going to get the sale anyway because I want you to learn from it. So I think you'll find that to be very helpful. Let me know in your, uh, your thoughts in the comments below here. What do you think? Do you think you could get better at sales? Have you experienced a bad salesperson before with anything you've tried to do? You're like, damn it, just take my money. You know, like they're they're trying to prevent the sale. Let me know in the comments if you've ever had anything like that. Uh, and if you're excited for tomorrow's training, let me know. You're going to see something really cool on tomorrow's morning meeting. I'm going to break down exactly what happened. I'll see you then. We'll talk later. I'm Greg Luther, and bye-bye for now.